Hey guys, this is Awesome Giants PS3, and this is episode 11 of season 4 of our FIFA 12 Sunderland Manager Mode commentary. And we are now in the month of December. We have three matches for you this episode in the combination of Carling Cup Premier League and Champions League. So, first off, we have an away match against Leeds United, followed by a Premier League match against Aston Villa. And then, lastly, we have another home game against Sevilla in the Champions League. So, some pretty tough matches there, especially in the Champions League. The Champions League is always a fixture which is harder than all the others. And in the Premier League, we are in third place with 31 points, four points behind the league leaders Manchester City and two points behind Arsenal in second place, Liverpool with 27 points, four points behind us and at the bottom of the table if anyone has an interest in this, Nottingham Forest, Blackburn Rovers and West Ham are in the relegation zones. So anyway, in the Champions League we are on eight points, two points behind Bayern Munich and three points ahead of Anderlecht so it is vitally important that we do not drop points and at least get one point against Sevilla in our Champions League match to guarantee qualification to the next round of the Champions League and anyway now for goal of the episode from last episode and as voted by you guys the Fernandinho goal against Anderlecht for that last minute equaler which was vitally important was the voted goal of the episode so thank you guys for leaving a comment on that and apparently clubs are circling like sharks for Sebastian Larsson including Inter Milan and AC Milan he is a quality player but doesn't always start for me because of other players but anyway on to our first match against Leeds United in the Carling Cup and as always in the Carling Cup I'm playing a very much a weaker side than I usually start in every other competition so not really expecting too much from them but Leeds aren't exactly a strong side so we should definitely win this match and we get off to a pretty good start here Ogsley Chamberlain breaking down the flank crossed it in for Fernandinho and surprisingly he managed to win the header but his header actually was an atrocious one. We had another chance here Connor Wickham really should be scoring the opportunity through on goal had all the time in the, in the world it broke out to Oxley chamberlain but the angle was a little bit too hard for him but Leeds actually started off much better than I did Luciano Becchio taking it past Simon Mignolet Damba blocks the shot on the line but then Luciano Becchio puts it in the back of the net a bit of confusion really unlucky there from Bam, but he does manage to stop it on the line and then Simon Mignolet and I think it's Nikolai Bolton just can't clear it out and Leeds actually take a 1-0 lead against us and they did actually have a lot more chances Ross McCormack there with a really good chance but just wide of the post Simon Mignolet wasn't really coming to claim that and look at this run from Fernandino really good run with a little bit of skill as well I don't usually use much skill but in the end the shot with his weaker right foot is a really appalling shot and the chance was thrown away but Leeds again on the 40th minute attack and Luciano Becchio puts them 2-1 really unfortunate I wasn't sure what I was doing there I think I was trying to tackle with Hovland and bring out Simon Mignolet at the same time and in the end Ross McCormick just crosses it over them and then Luciano Becchio can put that into an empty net so at half time I'm thinking no I'm not taking this I'm going to bring on Eunice Belhanda and Lucas Podolski because 2-0 down against Leeds United is just terrible but it was really tough playing against them I don't know why it seemed that after they had the 2-0 lead they were just happy to sit back and you know hold that 2-0 lead they didn't really attack at all and I just had chance after chance after chance that Stefan Sissignon shot that went over the bar there earlier followed by this one Fernandinho he tries to, to pass it out but in the end he manages to get hold of it has another shot and it is saved by the goalkeeper this time Lucas Podolski passes it to Eunice Belhanda and tries to have the shot but just smashes it straight at the goalkeeper and we really do need to be more clinical but we just put Leeds under so much pressure and they kept on giving us opportunity after opportunity Lucas Podolski has a shot there hit the top of the crossbar and went out for a goal kick and we just couldn't seem to score it was so frustrating we had so many chances this time in the 86th minute Lucas Podolski has a shot yet again saved by the keeper tries to lay it off for Eunice Belhanda but he was tackled and they hoof it out as they always do when they're 2-0 up and in the 90th minute with 4 minutes of added time Lucas Podolski finally breaks from the defence a nice turn there and then finesses it into the bottom corner to give us something of a consolation really I wasn't really expecting anything else now that I scored that goal it was a pretty nice goal by Lucas Podolski but it seemed that after that Leeds had possession they just threw it away literally just got tackled by Lucas Podolski really easy and spots Ogso Chamberlain in the centre pass it across into equalise again in the 90th minute literally at the very very end of 90th minute I, I can't believe I managed to equalise with so much little time there so look at that Lucas Podolski and Ogso Chamberlain both in the, in the 90th minute and as we are going into extra time now in the Carlin Cup it doesn't just end and then we get a new fixture it carries on to extra time and then penalties and somehow please someone explain to me how that is a penalty something has been going on in recent episodes giving away so many penalties and Marius Vossel so is he the other one, Mikhail Forsell perhaps puts it in the penalty and I'm sorry but how is this a penalty, if anything it's a foul on the defender, he just gets thrown off, I mean I know I'm holding on to him but 
I have no idea how that's a penalty. And Simon Mignolet made a pretty good save there. A little bit of an over-enthusiastic save, if I'm honest. I don't really... It, it didn't really have to make that much of a speculative effort. But we had a couple of chances after that. Lukas Podolski with the finesse there. Nothing really troubling the keeper, though. I felt after that, because of that penalty, I, I didn't have a chance. Even if I managed to equalise from the penalty, I probably wasn't going to score. We had a free kick from Lukas Podolski. This was our last chance. I tried to lay it off, and Hovland somehow is passed to. And in the heat of the moment, I tried to shoot with Hovland. And it's a terrible effort, and the goalkeeper just claimed that up. So at full time, it was Leeds United 3-2. And just look at those shots on target. 17 shots on target target to Leeds is seven. I can't believe I lost that match and in that sort of fashion as well. I can't believe I lost to that penalty. I have no idea how it was a penalty and at this point I was incredibly frustrated but anyway on to our second match against Aston Villa and this time I am starting a much stronger team. You know I have Hovland, Obonna, Courtois in the team. The only player who is out is Nathaniel Klein because his stamina is incredibly low so in the transfer window I'm going to have to sell a few players and bring in another right back because we can't play with the same bloke and now are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? He gets a penalty for that, but getting completely taken out isn't a penalty. Oh my god. I was, at this point, I was so frustrated. And then Collins puts Aston Villa 1-0 ahead, literally straight after that incident. A massive cock up there from Eunice Belhander, I think it was, passing it out from the post. He should have just hoofed it out instead passed it out. We have a good chance here, though, with James Milner. And I'm thinking, no. No more of this, you know, oh, I'm losing, oh, excuses, excuses. James Milner puts that in the back of the net to equalise into the top corner. A great, a great finish by him into the top corner with a finesse. And it was just so frustrating to not get that penalty. And, and I was still thinking at this point about the penalty against Leeds United. I was still thinking about it. And it was just so frustrating. Although there were a few chances for Aston Villa. One in the 37th minute here. Mark Albright crossed it in. And I can't pronounce his name. Mandajutic, maybe. I have no idea. With the header hits the post really lucky there for Courtois we had another chance James Milner it was a really terrible shot though just put it in the left or the right corner in the end just fires it straight out the goalkeeper and we really do need to be much more clinical I know myself I need to be more clinical but I, I swear that the players are just shooting it straight out the goalkeeper and on the streak of half time as, as you saw there Nathan Delfonso put Aston Villa 2 on up an absolute cock up at the back yet again my defender tried to slide out, tried to slide him out, and in the end, it put him into a lot of a better position. Lukas Podolski then has a chance, just takes it away from the defender, has a shot, and then hits the post, and my god, and in recent episodes, I'm hitting the crossbar, the post, I'm not getting penalties. What is happening here? But I, I think no more, I'm going to pass it across, and in the end, it's a really poor pass across, and Kevin Gamera can't quite get the shot away, and in the end, it's cleared out. He absolutely cocked up that chance there. All we had to do was pass it across, and I just seemed to screw up pass crosses all the time. Quartois was forced into a save there, but in the end, it was a really easy catch for him really comfortable with him but Lucas Podolski in the 70th minute on his right foot just smashes it past the keeper a great finish by him and that really gave us a really big goal there because I did not want to lose another match on his right foot as well I was really surprised that was a really top quality goal there by Lucas Podolski and again he had another opportunity on his right foot yet again and I'm trying to shoot with his left foot guys I'm trying my hardest but it seems they just want to shoot with their right foot every time it seems with every player I have it they just want to shoot with their right foot and oh my god James Milner what are you doing that was an absolute mistake for myself that he's only given the yellow card I was expecting a red card he just absolutely took out the player there and it's a penalty Joey Barton of all people steps up and just fires it straight at Quartzfoot in the 90th minute. What an absolutely terrible penalty by Joey Barton. And a full time it ended. Sunderland 2, Aston Villa 2. So luckily enough we did manage to pick up a point there. But it could have easily been another dropped point. And oh my god. These penalties. And that was just such an awful penalty from. I mean an awful tackle from James Milner. But anyway on to our last match against Sevilla in the Champions League. And we've been on an awful run of form lately. And just... What was I doing there? I tried to pass it out just to start the attack and in the end pass it to Mario Gomez. Really lucky he didn't score there. And it, that really epitomises my terrible run of form. And again, we have so many chances. Kevin Gamero with the shot, saved by the keeper and then hoofed there. And yet again, on the attack, this time Xardin Shakiri tries to pick out Kevin Gamero. Eventually does pick him out. And then I, I haven't got many options, so I just shoot straight out the keeper. And it is saved and eventually cleared out. We just need to be more clinical. I've said it so many times this episode. We have so many options opportunities and then we 
don't take them. And Hovland trying to mark Jesus Navas there. And in the end, it's a good save from Quattua because Hovland had no idea what to do, whether to mark the player in the centre or go to tackle him. In the end, he, he didn't really do either. But we have a good chance here with James Miller. Tries to finesse it into the bottom-hand corner. Really unlucky there. But again, into these chances, these opportunities, we have to take them and we need to be more clinical. Xardin Shakiri this time through on goal. Not really many options. Probably should have attempted to pass it across. But at half-time, it was Sunderland, Neil Sevilla and Neil. And we did have the opportunities to take the lead. But this sort of scoreline where we are picking up a point, I'm pretty happy about. Even if, you know, we do draw nil-nil, I'm reasonably happy with that. But this awful run of form we're on, I just, I could easily imagine us going 1-0 down. And Fellaini here has a shot. Quattro can't do anything really about it. Just palms it out and Negrego puts it in the back of the net. Luckily enough, he was offside and... I just Sevilla just kept on attacking from this second half. It was a really surprising second half performance from them. And Manu Del Morel actually puts them 1-0 ahead in the 77th minute. And in this point of time, I have no idea what the score is between Arndt and Bayern Munich. It could be that Bayern Munich are thrashing thrashing Anderlecht and it could be alright but I have no idea whatsoever and I tried to sweat it across here, Kevin Gamera really unlucky though, the goalkeeper managed to save it and I was just thinking no I'm not going to score here now, I'm being really unlucky, I pass it out to Stefan Sessignon on the edge of the area and at last at last I finally get a rub of the green, I finally get a penalty, here's just a replay of the penalty, he's clearly taken out there and at last I get a penalty, Sebastian Larson steps up to take it and of course puts it in the back of the net to equalise in the 84th minute so that that is a really good result there at full time. Sunderland won, Sevilla won, and you know it's, it's a point, and I'll, I'll easily and happily take a point because that guarantees us through to the next round of the Champions League. And in the Barclays Premier League table, we are in third place with 32 points, four points behind Arsenal, who have now gone on top. And in the Champions League, this is confirmation that we are through to do the next round of the Champions League with nine points, four points ahead of Anderlecht, and four points behind. Bayern Munich who were on top with 13 points quite unfortunate on Andlet but in the end I'm really happy to go through to the next round and now I'm just going to show you all the other teams that actually got through to the next round of the Champions League Manchester City and Schalke went through FC Porto and Lille went through with 13 points and 9 points exactly the same as my group actually also Barcelona and Inter Milan went through with 14 points and 10 points. FC Twente missing out by 2 points. Then we have Leverkusen and Chelsea. Chelsea just managing to sneak through ahead of Marseille. They were on the same points total, but actually had two more goal difference so quite lucky there in the other groups Juventus and Ajax went through over Zenit St. Petersburg so quite good on Ajax they don't actually often make it through to the knockout stages and in group G is um, Benfica and Real Madrid going through 12 points and 9 points and in group H Manchester United and Paris St. Germain going through quite close there actually quite surprisingly so those are all the teams going through to the next round of the Champions League and now for goal of the episode and we have two Lucas Podolski goals here first of we have the one against Leeds United which actually started off the comeback surprisingly a great finish into the bottom hand corner and that was a pretty sw sweet goal there and then we have the Lucas Podolski goal against Aston Villa where we did manage to equalise at 2-2 it was a really great goal on his right foot there so please leave a comment in the comment section below on which one you think should be goal of the episode and now for player of the episode and I was tempted to give it to Lucas Podolski but I think I'm going to give it to James Milner because he really should have got it last episode he's been overdue the award of player of the episode and also I feel that a lot of my attacks went through him he also scored that goal against Aston Villa so I'm going to give him my player of the episode award if you have any opinion on it please leave it in the comment section below and anyway guys thanks for watching, for the, uh, thanks for watching this episode I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please leave a thumbs up because it really helps us out and all that stuff so anyway guys thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed